Assalamualaikum. Dear students, Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Muhammad Mudassar Shahzad from University of Education. And today we will discuss about the region of zoo geography that is called as Palearctic region. Here you can see the different regions in this diagram with the main animals that are present in that areas. If we talk about the Palearctic region that we are going to discuss in our today's lecture, there are about five different regions of that major part. Number one is Euro-Siberian subregion. Number two is Mediterranean basin. Number three is Sahara and Arabian desert. Number fourth is Eastern and Central Asia. And the number fifth is East Asia. These are the five sub-regions of Palearctic region. Dear students, if we talk about the main areas of that region, if in which number one is all of Europe, Number two is northern part of Africa. Number three is northern China. And the next one is USSR. That is called as Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. Or it can also be called as Russia. And the other one is Japan. Next one is Iran and Afghanistan. And the last one is some part of Pakistan that is Balochistan. These are the basic different areas that are present in that region. Dear students, before moving towards our main topic, firstly I want to introduce about the main terms that will be used in this lecture and in our next upcoming lectures of different regions that we will discuss in our next classes. First of all, I want to introduce about coastal areas. Coastline is where the land meets the sea or ocean. Next one is broadleaf forest. It consists mainly of deciduous trees. A decrease in latitude leads to an increase in number of broad leaf trees that are evergreen and keep their leaves all the winter. Next is polar region, a region where snowy ice is present and is very cold. Next is desert. Desert is basically a sketch of infertile and barren land with very high temperature and very low rainfall. Next is taiga. Taiga is basically subarctic evergreen forest of Eurasia located south of tundra. Next one is temperate grasslands. Temperate grasslands are composed of a rich mix of different gases and underlined by some of the world's most fertile soils. Next is mountain grassland. Mountain grasslands are basically include the alpine tundra above the tree line as well as grasslands below it. These high altitude grass, grasslands often exist as isolated island in the sea of another habitat type. And the last one is tundra. Tundra is basically a biome where the tree growth is hindered by low temperature and short growing seasons. In tundra, vegetation is composed of dwarf shrubs, grasses, mosses and lichens. 
here are the different habitats of Palearctic region in which number one you can see the coastal areas in diagrammatic form next one is broadleaf forest and on the third you can see the polar regions in which you can see a lot of snow and the next one is desert with a lot of sand and very low availability of water with high temperature and low rainfall next is taiga here you can see the basic regions of taiga next is temperate grasslands here you can see a lot of grasses next is mountain grasslands here you can see a lot of mountains having grasslands and the last one is tundra here you can see a lot of snow and ice in which different snow living organisms can live now we are going towards the physical features of Palearctic region. Palearctic region is basically bounded by sea to east, west and north. If we talk about the south side, there is Sahara and Himalayas to south side of Palearctic region. It is continuous land connection with two of neighbors number one is ethiopian region and number two is oriental region Palearctic region also includes polar arctic region now we are going towards the climate if we talk about the climate of Palearctic region it is more or less temperate the region includes both wet forest lands and dry open steep lands as well as large coniferous forest here you can see the wet forest in this diagram and on the other hand on your right side you can see a lot of forest that are called as coniferous forests students here is the basic introduction of all of these terms that you have studied in above slide first of all if we talk about the temperate region it is basically a climate that is neither very hot in summer nor very cold in winter season next is wet forest land wet forest land is basically present at high elevation points and having more than 100 inch of rainfall in one year these are the basic physical ingredients for the wet forest if we talk about the steep land steep land are basically large areas of flat grassy land where there are no trees and at the last if we talk about the coniferous forest coniferous forests are basically regions have cold long snowy winters and warm humid summers these are the well-defined seasons at least four to six frost free months There is a wide range of temperature that fluctuate in rainfalls. There is a great diversity of surface features or characteristics or basic characteristics of this region. Here you can see the open steep land. If we talk about the major ecological regions that I have introduced in the start of this lecture. There are about six different sub regions in which number one is European sub region, number two is Mediterranean sub region, number three is Siberian sub region, 
Number fourth is Sahara and Arabian Desert. Number fifth is East Asia and sixth and last is fresh water. Dear students, now we are going towards the sub regions of Palearctic region. Number one, we are going to discuss about the European sub region and its fauna. Basically, northern part of Europe, central part of Europe and the Black Sea are included in this sub-region that is called as European sub-region. It is presented by 20, uh, 85 different families of vertebrates. From these vertebrates, if we talk about the reptiles and birds, there are about six different families of amphibians and reptiles. If we talk about the birds, birds like tits, wagtails, and mammals like wolves and moles are basically present in this sub-region and are the common birds and mammals that are present in this subtropical area. Here you can see both the diagrams in which number one you can see the central Europe. Here is the northern part of Europe. If we talk about the central Europe, there are Poland, Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Austria, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, etc. These are the main countries of Central Europe. If we talk about the Northern Europe, in Northern Europe there are Norway, Sweden, Finland and other many countries such as Germany, Poland, Denmark. These are the main countries of Northern Europe. Dear students, here you can see the map of Black Sea that is surrounded by different countries of Europe and on this side you can see the Turkey. <coughs> Dear students, here in first picture you can see the water of Black Sea and on the second picture, you can see the view of Black Sea from satellite. I want to introduce about the history of Black Sea. Why the Black Sea is called as black? There are different theories. Number one, the sea was first named by Greeks who named is inhospitable sea. Why it is called as inhospitable sea? Because it was very difficult to navigate here in this water. Due to inavailability of navigation, it was called as inhospitable sea. Second theory is about the black coloration of water. It was thought that there are some different type of metals or rocks or remainings of different dead organisms. Due to these different things such as dead animal remains or dead organisms remains or different metals, it was called as dead sea. These are the basically different theories related to the name of this sea. But one of the main famous theory that is called as compass point. According to this theory, many researchers try to explain the origin of name that is black refer 
to north on the compass. Now we are going towards the fauna of European sub region. Firstly, we will talk about the birds. Here you can see the tilts and wagtails that are present in European sub region. If we talk about the mammals, the main important families of mammals are wolf and mole that are present in European sub region of Palearctic region. Now we are going towards the second sub region that is called as Mediterranean sub region. If we talk about the Mediterranean sub region, you can see the map that is going to present the areas of Mediterranean sub regions. Now we are going towards the second sub region that is called as Mediterranean sub region. Firstly, we are going to discuss the different areas that are included in Mediterranean sub region. In Mediterranean sub region, remaining parts of Europe, Africa, and Arabian portions are included in this sub region. There are about 124 different families of terrestrial vertebrates that are present in this sub region. If we talk about the birds, there are Hopi, Pastor, and when we talk about the mammals, there are Elephant Shiru, Hyena, and Parcopine that are basically present in this sub region. These are the birds in which you can see the picture of Pastor and Hoppy. Here the mammals of Mediterranean sub region in which you can see the elephant shrews and hyena. If we talk about the climate of Mediterranean sub region Mediterranean sub region basically having the mild climate, rainy winters, and hot, dry summers. Now we are going towards the third sub region that is called as Siberian sub region. In Siberian sub region, Northern Asia, Himalayas, are basically included in this sub region. About 94 different families of vertebrates that are included in this sub region. Families of musk deer and moles are the main families of mammals that are present in Siberian sub region. Here you can see the diagram of musk deer and mole. Now we are going towards the fourth sub region that is called as Sahara and Arabian Desert. The areas that are included in this sub region are great belts of deserts, including Atlantic Coastal Desert, Sahara Desert and Arabian desert. These deserts basically separate the Palearctic region from Afrotropical eco regions. Here you can see the diagram of Sahara desert. Palearctic deserts that cover about 16 million square kilometers of total deserts of earth that is approximately 63 percent of all the deserts of this planet this subregion also includes a gold gobi 
sorry this sub region is also includes the cold gobi desert that is also present in central asia now we will talk about the important fauna of desert sub region there are about 70 different species of mammals and from these 70 different species 20 species are large mammals there are about 90 different species of resident birds and about 100 different species of reptiles that are present in this sub region students desert of central asia sport small populations of rare mammals such as wild bacterian camel asian wild ass that have been largely extirpated in wild here you can see the asian wild asses and here the picture of wild bacterian camels both of these mammals are largely present in desert of central asia dear students now we are going towards the fifth sub region that is east asia sub region of palearctic region if we talk about the major areas or major countries of East Asia, there are China, Taiwan, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, and Mongolia. These are the major countries that are present in this sub region. Here in this map, you can see Mongolia. China, Taiwan, South Korea, North Korea, and Japan that are presented in East Asia. Now we talk about the fauna of East Asia. In East Asia, there are different families of mammals. In which you can see Tiptian langur, great panda, tufted deer, Chinese water deer. These are the most common mammals of East Asia. Here you can see the picture of Chinese water deer and great panda. Now we are going towards the sixth and large last sub region that is the fresh water periodic region also contains several important fresh water eco regions it mainly includes heavily developed rivers of europe rivers of russia siberian lakes that is the lake Baikal, Japan's ancient lake that is Baiwa. Lake Baiwa that is formerly known as Ome is the largest freshwater lake in Japan. If we talk about the lake Baikal, lake Baikal is the world's oldest and deepest lake at 30 million years old and with an average depth of 744 meters it is the second most voluminous lake after the caspian sea it contains a lot of fresh water that's why it is called as most voluminous freshwater lake in the world. Roughly, 
it was calculated that 20% of world's surface fresh water that is unfrozen here you can see the picture of lake baikal and here is the european sea and in this picture you can see the lake beva if we talk about the fauna and flora of palearctic region here you can see the different fauna of palearctic region and on the other sides different regions in which ethiopian region and oriental region that are neighbors of palearctic region when we talk about the fauna of palearctic region we will firstly discuss about the different classes of vertebrates number 1 class of vertebrate is fishes number 2 is amphibians number 3 class is reptiles number 4 class is of birds and the fifth and last class of vertebrates is mammals if we talk about the fishes of palearctic region there are great white shark here you can see in this picture other than that brook brook lampreys atlantic sailfish atlantic salmon that is presented in this picture atlantic trout brown trout and paddle fish all of these fishes are basically common in water that is near to china and insides of china if we talk about the birds of palearctic region there are main birds of palearctic region are hawks ducks storks cuckoos kingfishers swifts blackbirds finches grebes loons etc there is very interesting factor in fauna of birds in palearctic region that there are no parrots in this region the only families that are restricted to this region is pronelidi family of bird here are the different pictures of these birds in which you can see the hawks ducks storks and cuckoos here are the two other species of birds in which you can see the white breasted kingfisher kingfisher this bird is basically known as tree king fisher breast and throat of these birds is white that's why they are called as white breasted kingfisher other than that they have very beautiful colors on their body legs and bills are also very very colorful if we talk about the swift swift is basically an aerial bird closely related to swallow due to lifestyle based catching birds in flight it has very short neck when we compare it to other animals here are black bird chaffinch grebe and loons if we talk about the black bird black bird is also known as 
Eurasian black bird having totally black color except for yellow eyes, ring and bill. If we talk about chaffinch, it is seed eater finch. It is present typically in well woodland areas, but sometimes found in mountains or even in deserts. If we talk about grebes, grebes are basically freshwater diving birds. If we talk about their size, they are about small to medium sized birds, have lobed toes and excellent swimmers and divers. And at the last, if we talk about the loons, loons are basically also aquatic birds, same like grebes. They are present in northern Eurasia. They have also webbed toes for their swimming. Now we are going towards the endemic families of Palearctic region. Endemic families of Palearctic region are Prunilidic family. The animals of Prunilidic family basically similar to words. Now we are going towards the mammals. The common mammals that are included in Palearctic region are brown bear, red panda, red deer, elks, reindeer, cats, rabbits, polar bears, red squirrels, porcupine, pangolin, etc. This region does not have any large spectacular mammal. Here are the pictures of these different mammals that you have studied in above slide. Number one is brown bear and on the other hand you can see the red panda. Here is the red deer and on the other hand you can see the giant panda. If we talk about the different animals, firstly we will discuss about the brown bear. These are basically largest bears which is most widely distributed in periodic region. They are basically called as brown bear due to brown in color and has large and curved claws. When we talk about red panda, red panda is basically small arboreal mammal. It has long soft reddish brown fur on upper parts and blackish fur on lower parts and the light face with tear marking and robust cranial dental features. The third animal is red deer. It is the fourth largest deer in world. The ruminant of these red deers having four chambered stomach. The meat of reindeer is used as food. Red deers also having the antlers. Last, at, lastly, we will discuss about the red panda. Red panda is basically having black and white cat foot. It is easily recognized 
by its large distinctive black patches around eyes and over the ears and across the body 99% the they feed on bamboos and you can see the elks reindeer wild cat and rabbit if we talk about the elk elk is largest deer which have even toes on foot if we talk about the habitat they live in forest and forest edges they feed on different grasses plants their leaves and bark ruminant having four chambered heart if we talk about the reindeer reindeer is also known as caribou it vary wildly in size and color the both sexes of reindeer male and female having the antlers if we talk about the wild cat these are small cats it is native to europe western part of asia and africa it is hunter of small mammals birds and other creature of small size lastly we will talk about the rabbit rabbit are basically nocturnal animals these are fast runners they live in burrows the females show parental care to their offspring here are the pictures of polar deer red squirrel porcupine and pangolin the unique mammals of palearctic region are about two different families if we talk about these families number 1 is spelicidae and number 2 family is salivinidae spelix belongs to spelicidae family is basically a brown yellow burrowing cat with no tail while if we talk about the salivinia that belongs to salivinidae family is mainly remarkable because it was discovered in 1938 in kazakhstan this is the picture of spelix and here you can see the picture of salivinia there are postal tickets of salivinia in kazakhstan if we talk about the reptiles that are present in palearctic region there are turtles tortoises few lizards true pit vipers and snakes there is also an alligator in china no family of reptile is confined to this region there are the keeled box turtle marginated tortoise dice snakes and monitored lizards here you can see the picture of two pit vipers and chinese alligator now we are going to discuss about the amphibians of palearctic region palearctic region is very important 
from the point of view that it has a large number of tailed amphibians which includes newts and salamanders and tailless amphibians which includes common toads and frogs besides them marsh frogs chinese joint salamanders and siberian salamanders etc are also very common in palearctic region here are the pictures of newts frog cave dwelling salamander and common toad if we talk about the affinities of palearctic region the fauna of palearctic region is not very rich it is complex of old world tropical families and new world temperate families of palearctic mammals rabbits dogs and bat families are world widely distributed there are also shrews squirrels and mammals and members of cat family in every other region except then the australian region it also shares the bears and deer with neartics and neotropical and oriental region that was all about of today's lecture you can send me your questions आप मुझे अपने जो सवाल हैं वो भेज सकते हैं अगर किसी बच्चे को कोई भी किसी किस्म की कोई डिफिकल्टी है वो अपने क्वेश्चंस जो हैं वो सेंड करके उनका आंसर्स ले सकते हैं